Hi, I'm Amelia Drake, um, the Interim Program Director here at the University of North Carolina Department of Otolaryngology Residency, and I want to welcome you and your interest in our program. I'm going to go through a short, approximately 10 minute video describing updates to our residency, um, and you will see the following items discussed. First, the program structure for the residency. Second, some research uh, updates. And last, lastly, we'll discuss some of our educational initiatives. So mostly welcome and thank you for your interest. Um, I may not stay on the video the whole time, but I did want to start feeling like uh, <laughs> I was talking to you. So let's talk about the program structure first. We have had some significant restructuring of our curriculum based in large part uh, on feedback from our residents. And some of the key changes are listed. Um, first of all, we have flexible weekly assignments de designed to optimize clinical and educational value. So the idea is not to put you where maybe another set of hands are needed, but more where can I learn the most? Um, and this has become much more flexible and relates to the resident's uh, need for education. In the uh, second year, uh, we've um, amended our research block to be four months of research with two additional targeted clinical exposures at our main campus. In our third year, the PGY3 um, resident is exposed to clinical elective opportunities for the first time to really ensure customized exposures prior to, your, prior to making a decision about a fellowship or a practice area. And then I'll say a few words about the T32 resident um, which has, who will have added limited clinical exposure to facilitate transition back to the clinical residency. And I will keep those comments short because uh, we will be interviewing for four five-year residency spots this year and um, the T32 program, although it is ongoing, will not be have an opening during this particular year. So let's talk about the five-year clinical structure. This is PGY 1 through 5 with the research happening in the second year. So some of the first year, of course, will be uh, designed around uh, taking um, some time to explore what areas are interesting as far as research. Then I'll mention the T32 program structure because some of the residents uh, shown in this picture are actually T32 uh, residents, meaning they're doing a seven-year program of which two years are dedicated to research. And in the fifth year, or seventh year, they have a six-month block to basically design at the, around an area of their interest. So many people have done it as a mini fellowship in an area that they plan to uh, do their actual fellowship in. Um, so let's start at the beginning. PGY first year is your intern year. That's a year where you have a lot of clinical experience. Um, you get three month preceptors, preceptorships within a laryngology, and then you spend three months as a floor intern on head and neck, learning basic inpatient care um, and interacting with the rest of the team from that role. There's one month in the surgical ICU, one month of anesthesiology, two months of trauma surgery at Wake Med, which is a community hospital in Raleigh, and some of their faculty will likely be participating with our um, residency interviews, then two months in pediatric surgery at Wake Med, which continues to be one of the highest ranked uh, rotations in terms of um, popularity and involvement. It's a strong surgical uh, learning experience. Next, we'll go to the PGY2 year, where the four months of research take place. Um, the PGY2 resident also does a month of head and neck and a month on ancillary services, including audiology, speech language pathology, and neuroradiology. And then they 
do six months of general laryngology at the Wake Med um, Community uh, Hospital. And that's, again, a popular rotation. Uh, next, we'll go to the PGY three year. That's a year when the resident does two, year, two months each of head and neck, general slash rhinology, and facial plastic, reconstructive surgery slash pediatrics, as well as otology slash laryngology. So those rotations have been designed to maximize clinical experience in all those um, areas where we have fellowship trained faculty um, in the fellowship trained areas. So head and neck rhinology, pediatrics, otology, laryngology, and facial plastic. In addition, the third year resident spends a month of elective time and three months at Wake Med. Um, some of the pictures <laughs> are designed to show the residents doing fun things. Let's talk a little bit about junior call. Junior call at UNC Hospitals is Q5 for the PGY 2 and 3 residents. There's no overnight call for PGY 1s on otolaryngology, but they have home call. On weekends, um, you do Friday, Sunday, or Saturday alone, so split weekends. And at Wake Med, there's a new night float system that has been rolled out with a Q3 day call of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. In the PG4 year, the resident will do three months of head and neck, three months of chief at Wake Med, which has been a leadership experience uh, in their PGY fourth year. Three months as consult resident, which is a busy uh, rotation. One month of facial plastic or slash pizzotto, and one month of otology laryngology, one month of rhinology general. So it's a, a year with a lot of um, variety in terms of clinical experience, and you can see the residents seem to enjoy that year a lot because they're senior residents. The next year is the fifth year, and that's an administrative, we have roles for an administrative and an academic chief role. So three months each, each resident does each, and those are significant leadership roles where they determine uh, scheduling. The academic chief uh, invites speakers, helps um, select uh, grand rounds, for example, and other uh, didactic sessions and um, the PGY fifth uh, chief year is a significant leadership experience. That said, they also expend, spend three months in each of head and neck, facial plastic pizzotto, oto, otology, laryngology, and rhinology general. So those are how the rotations have been um, designed. So let's talk about senior call. Senior call at UNC is Q7. It's backup call only from home and with a power weekend. So obviously if you're very busy, we want to hear about that and back off on activities for you the, the next day that you're clinically active. But it tends to be a, a strong, um, the, lead, the senior call is a very strong uh, experience uh, that is back up and from home come in as needed. So let's talk about the current residents. Uh, here are the, is the ratio, is the, I'm going to I'm going to take my picture off, I think, maybe I can't. I was going to try to show the slide better to show the um, current cadre of residents uh, by year, and so senior residents down to junior residents and the people in the T32 who are uh, in the lab are all shown on this slide. So now that we've talked a bit about that, uh, the rotation schedule. Let's talk a little bit about research and at UNC Department of Otolaryngology. Research is basically very wide and broad and is really only limited by your imagination. So if someone wants to work within another department, um, we encourage collaborative multidisciplinary projects and I'll just give examples. Um, the current 
research resident projects of the T32 residents who are currently in the lab include um, Cameron Worden, who's, who's researching environmental and occupational risk factors in the development of chronic sinusitis endotypes. So quite a specific project, and he's uh, midway through that, or he's starting that right this year. Uh, Sarah Russell is um, the year ahead, and she's using computational fluid dynamics to compare non-cleft nasal obstruction to unilateral and bilateral cleft nasal obstruction and olfactory function. So these are examples of uh, current projects. I will list some of the prior projects so you get a good idea of what has been done. And let me say this list is by no means complete. Previous research resident projects included Dr. Farzal, Zainab Farzal, who's at one of the current chiefs. She looked at optimization of sinonasal drug delivery for chronic rhinosinusitis using computational fluid dynamics. She's looked at sex, race, and literacy-related inequities in otolaryngology. Um, I'll show selected resident publications shortly, but you'll see that every one of these uh, people who have spent time in the lab have has a lot to, uh, has, has significant scholarship under their belt as they look for fellowship and ultimately faculty positions, faculty or staff uh, or um, practice positions. Michael Canferrato, Canferrato, who's a PGY-5 currently, is looking at the effects of electro, electrode array position on cochlear implant outcomes and spatial hearing in children with congenital unilateral oral atresia with and without bone conduction hearing aids. I probably don't need to read all these, but you see Wesley Stepp, who has a PhD, uh, has done significant work in biomarkers in head and neck cancer. And Andrew Prince uh, has worked on, in really um, a video-to-speech software uh, project of which he is an entrepreneur and has uh, really worked on a startup in this regard, I must say. So just a quick slide to show some of the selected publications, and I know you can pause this recording at any time if you want to look at something closer. This is some of the scholarship that has come out of the selected resident publications. And although we do encourage our residents to partner with our faculty when you do research, uh, you can see that it's a wide variety of interests and topics that have um, been published. And, and indeed, there's huge amount of um, involvement of the faculty and residents in publications and really ongoing and lifelong learning. So I'll speak a little bit specifically about the educational structure now. We, um, I must say that each one of us as faculty thinks daily about the education of our residents. It may not seem that way, but we try to look at our clinic schedule, our OR schedule, and maximize the learning of the resident who shows up that day. This is pivotal to our existence, and it may not show up every day if we don't say something or in a busy day, but I can tell you we start and end every day thinking of our residents and how to teach them so they'll be prepared to practice it when their time comes to practice independently. So much of the education is faculty-led. We have a weekly didactic lecture curriculum, a tumor board, a head and neck tumor board that's weekly, a temporal bone anatomy course, and competition towards the end of the year, soft tissue and flap courses, and a microvascular anastomosis lab. These take place in a really state-of-the-art sim lab where we share uh, the space with neurosurgery and ophthalmology for some of their courses, but it's a beautiful space, and uh, sadly, you won't see it in person unless you come here, but it's a very uh, state-of-the-art um, area for learning. There are, in addition to that, annual resident education courses that include our pediatric airway course that alternates back and forth between UNC and MUSC, uh, Medical University of South Carolina, and alternates between Chapel Hill and Charleston. There's an AAOA allergy course in Dallas. There's a Southern States rhinology course. 
and there's a course that alternates typically between North Carolina and South Carolina, typically Asheville and Myrtle Beach, called the North Carolina, South Carolina Otolaryngology Society Annual Meeting. Now, not everyone goes to each one of these courses. We tend to send the uh, people that have finished their second year to the North Carolina, South Carolina, because they want to talk about their research projects. There's a boot camp that you see that we do with uh, Duke for the PGY2 resident. And the academy meeting might be someone someone who's a little bit further along who might have projects to present there. Um, so that we try to select the course that's most helpful for each year. And I don't want to promise which course you'd go to, but suffice it to say that even with COVID, we're trying to make sure the residents get to these courses. So uh, just to give you another picture of the Miracles in Sight Surgical Simulation Laboratory it was uh, in part um, envisioned for the, our ophthalmologic colleagues. Uh, so there, there's a picture of it and the stations are all really state of the art, have a microscope and um, a, an operative area, so that works out beautifully. Uh, for my last few slides, I want to talk about things I wanted to add as the interim program director. I'll just be program director for this year as we have a formal uh, search in progress to replace uh, Dr. Buckmeyer, who served with dedication and enormous skill for the last 12 years. Uh, so I added a couple slides just to to say um, we care about you and some of our some of our examples um, of why we care about, about you are the resident wellness committee um, Jamie duty is our faculty member who uh, oversees the wellness initiative in the department we have uh, a number of initiatives and efforts to include wellness activities for our residents in addition we have a women in otolaryngology group uh, at UNC. This is one of the first years we met, and this I think was in 2012. Dr. Clatt Cromwell is in this picture. I'm in the picture, but it shows how long we've had a really a group dedicated to discussing issues that relate to women in otolaryngology, um, and we do that off-site and off campus, off campus and off hours. We have an active DEI committee, which has journal clubs every quarter. Um, some of our, I have a picture of Sarah Hodge scrubbing at the scrub sink to say we've had wonderful uh, experiences with our residents going through normal life activities like having children. Um, we do have a caregiver grant that will be finishing in a year and a half, but uh, two of our faculty members are awardees. Ironically, both are men. Men, Travis Schrank and Adam Kimple, who balance caregiving at home with their research uh, and clinical careers. And then we have a lot of departmental events. So thank you for joining us. We're excited to welcome you here. There's the picture of the old well from the South Building, one of the administrative buildings on campus and the hospital at night, which is, is beautiful, even though you're usually coming in to do some work. Uh, and as always, we have a strong uh, basketball interest, so go Heels. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope to answer any additional questions in person.